Okay. So, Sean or Yi, could you? I think we're oh. just waiting for Yi to share his slides. Okay. I can do. I will share my screen now. Thank you. Can you see the screen? Yes, it's looking good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Just put in the full screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, good. Uh, Good morning, and, and uh, very nice to be to be here in Eva, and uh, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, give a little bit short uh, talk about uh, my uh, work and the collaboration with uh, Sean. Uh, when, what we've been doing in the uh, last few years, uh, and also I will introduce uh, my uh, school and uh, uh, some of the our works. Firstly, uh, my name is uh, uh, E.G. and you, call, you can call me E. and uh, I'm the, uh, uh, the director of the Intelligent Interaction Design Lab and the Future Extension Art Lab. Um, so here is my little uh, introduction of myself. Uh, myself is uh, 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 a researcher in the interaction design and uh, I'm the uh, new media artist as well. Uh, so I do some uh, curation uh, work uh, in internationally and also I working in a different uh, university uh, around the world. And also uh, did a lot of uh, collaboration with different uh, institutes and also the uh, uh, some uh, 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 partners and uh, designer and artists. So uh, I think uh, I would like to have more uh, conversation after this, uh, uh, comes, uh, this meeting. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a few, uh, few things. One is uh, uh, just a very brief um, background of the uh, Guangdong University of Technology and uh, some of the international collaborate uh, center, uh, center and also some related uh, work we have been doing. Uh, firstly, uh, for the school uh, or the university, I think uh, I'm not talking about too much and uh, later I will give you a, a very uh, beautiful uh, short video which can see the, exactly what the school is. Uh, so here we just want to mention a few things. One is uh, uh, the school is the biggest uh, art school in the China, and we have uh, almost 5,000 uh, full-time students uh, and uh, 180 staff. Uh, so it's kind of a big size. So also we have a PhD and a postgraduate research student and a undergraduate student. So uh, which is a uh, 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 lots of uh, different levels of students in our school. So I'm going to show you a video. Just give me a, uh, let's just uh, turn on the video and uh, you can see, can you see the video now? Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, I just stop here because the time is a short. So I just uh, move on to my next slide. Uh, as you can see, we did a lot of uh, uh, different works, and we have uh, almost uh, eight uh, departments uh, in the school. So mainly, I'm working in the interaction design area, uh, which is uh, my uh, most uh, collaborations uh, uh, interests. So you can see we got the postgraduate research and undergraduate coursework. So also, we have uh, lots of international workshop and a summer school. So uh, in different levels, we have a different uh, collaboration and a different uh, uh, partners uh, in different programs. So, and also we want to see is uh, we got the uh, project-based collaboration, which uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, partners, uh, university uh, in uh, UK, Australia, Japan, uh, New Zealand. And also we have the uh, uh, co-education uh, uh, student exchange to different uh, uh, universities. So the, uh, the, the, the strategy we got uh, two uh, for the collaboration, uh, one is international academic partner and one is a international uh, industrial partner. So uh, you can see uh, we have uh, a different uh, motives uh, can doing different uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, following, I will introduce some uh, of my uh, intelligence interaction design lab and the future extension art lab. Uh, probably I most focus on the first one. The second one will, uh, Sean will give more details. For the internet, uh, intelligence interaction design lab, we mainly doing uh, our research uh, about uh, the uh, exploring new type of the interaction and uh, uh, user experiences. We collaborated with the University of Technology Sydney uh, and the Lachob University, uh, also Tsinghua University in China. So we did a lot of research work and the work can be found in the website and also on our uh, website. So the, we have a different uh, uh, type of the uh, uh, mm, international uh, uh, research uh, goal and the different type of the uh, 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 things we focus on. So I'm not uh, give too much details, but you can see uh, this is the brief uh, four uh, directions what, what are we doing. So some of the works uh, are, are mainly focus on different uh, uh, type of the uh, media, which we call the uh, uh, the uh, the phone, and uh, also uh, you can see uh, AR, VR, MR, uh, all the platforms we are doing this, and also we interesting in uh, uh, many uh, uh, research on interaction design and. Okay. Um, I'm just going to send a message. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll just. Um... Okay, I think Yi has um, given a uh, an introduction to the university and part of the research. What I'm going to do now is talk about the Future Extensions Art Lab. Now, okay, it's not coming back. Okay, okay. well, I, I will start my presentation proper then. So. Well, um, Future Extensions Art Lab is the uh, unit that I'm attached to in Yi's um, university. I've been working with them for about, well, actually, it'll be heading towards maybe three years now. Um, and the focus of my work has been to develop a workshop and exhibition program. And really, that's what I'm going to present to you today. So I'm going to share my screen now and run my slides. Okay, so hopefully you can see those all right. So um, one of the sort of subtitles that we've introduced across a number of our activities is this East meets West idea. And really what we're trying to do is to combine some of the expertise, skills, approaches that um, I've been involved in in the West and are generally um, uh, the approaches that we might take to work 
with elements of Chinese culture. And for me, this collaboration, it's been very important that the Chinese-ness of it comes through. So throughout the work that I, I do, I encourage our students um, and our other activities to make the most of their Chinese heritage. What I don't want to do is go over to China and say, this is how things should be done. I'm going to do them my way and um, really just impose a sort of more Western approach on the research we're doing and the education we're doing. So <clears throat> I've um, done two streams of activity. One is the creative technology workshops and the other are the exhibitions. I'm really going to focus a bit on the workshops because I have a few insights um, relating to pre and post COVID here, um, which when um, <clears throat> we thought about the uh, presentation was something that wasn't quite so profound, but actually I now know that um, teaching remotely and teaching face to face are very different things. I'm sure a lot of people know that, but um, I have a few insights into how they're different and so on. Um, so what I wanted to do was develop a set of, or try to encourage students to think creatively with technology, but also to learn technology through creativity. So I wanted to teach programming. I wanted to look at hardware. Um, we wanted to have a strong um, connection with Guangzhou Porcelain, which is a craft um, from the area, Guang, Guangzhou area. And then I wanted to bring in a few of my interests, computer drawing, wearable computing, um, plus 3D modeling and so on. So I had the idea really of trying to work with the students on a whole range of skills. Now, pre-COVID-19, this was the typical um, working environment. We'd have 30 students be broken down into five groups and they'd work together on projects. And as I mentioned before, the projects would include, I think this shows some AR work, augmented reality work, but we'd also work with um, Arduino, Scratch, Microbits and so on. <clears throat> um, working environment was very sort of tactile, if you like. There were lots of things around electronics, um, computers, um, multiple screens and so on. Very nice workshop style environment. And these workshops would run over a four week period and I would go to China and do two um, or eight hours a week of teaching plus some associated um, activities as well. And the sort of outputs we got, um, we've um, seen, I think you may have seen these at either a couple of years ago when we brought some work over include um, interactive lighting. So these are lamps that can respond to their environment. Uh, these have a lovely Chinese feel about them. The student um, did a great job. Um, laser cutting and then embedded electronics inside there for um, uh, light changing according to the environment. Uh, 3D printing. <clears throat> so we have work here where a student has um, designed and printed and then illuminated a really nice object. Um, in our wearable computing work, um, we saw some great crossover between um, craft and digital work. So this was a mask that had embedded lights and those lights could be controlled through hand gestures. Um, inside was a, a micro bit actually um, um, doing the electronics. As you can see, I, I love this piece of work because of that crossover, that east meets west, if you like. I brought in the electronics and interactivity skills, but the students had brought their sort of rich cultural heritage in. So we had a, a lovely piece of work there. Um, and then wearable devices like this, a sort of a, this was a, a glove for um, runners who wanted to do signs so that cars would know where they're turning. Just a concept, but they worked the concept up using a variety of technologies. So as, as I mentioned, that pre-COVID workshop was, or those workshops, were very much about making things, being in the same environment and me helping the students out um, to really use some of these digital making skills um, combined with their design approach. Post COVID things had to be different. So <clears throat> this is what the work environment looked like. Um, not quite as, as fun if you like, if people sitting in rows and of course wearing masks because um, people in China have to wear masks like us at the moment. Um, we ran it with two cameras and I feel it's a little bit big brother like actually me sitting at the end there on the screen teaching the students. If I'm honest, it's not my preferred way of teaching. I, I don't mind lecturing and standing in front of an audience, but I'd much rather be mingling with the students, showing them um, how to do things. But it worked. We managed to adapt our courses 
in this post-COVID environment to um, uh, effectively online working, because clearly I couldn't um, travel over to China. So one of the exercises we fo focused on first of all was creating an interactive game or um, sort of cultural demonstrator of some sort. Um, I was going to very briefly um, click and have a look. So I think this should open up. So I allowed the students to modify work they found online. Um, if anyone's taught students programming, you'll know that that's what they do. You can't stop it, so make the most of it. But I wanted to make sure whatever they produced had a strong Chinese feel. So here they produce a little battle game and they based it on Chinese um, dragons and so on, which are um, quite fun. And within this game, there are lots of classic um, programming techniques. You're having to, you know, variables and while loops and this, that and the other. Um, so I found it uh, quite a nice way of um, <clears throat> introducing programming. And we, we use Scratch because it's a visual programming environment and it can be switched to Chinese. So I can be demonstrating, writing some code and then flip it over to Chinese for the students to have a closer look at. And we also, because we're now teaching online, had a sort of emphasis on them producing posters and presenting the work online. So we have um, posters of the work here. Um, a second task that I had done before, but I brought to the fore was um, teaching computer drawing through programming. And this is a, a set of activities and Nick, I think I probably have five minutes. Is that right? Sean, it's a bit less than that because we're slightly over running. Okay. If you make it th three at most times. Yeah. Um, so this is a set of activities that I will report on probably at a future EVA, where I've been creating classic computer artworks using the Scratch program as a way of demonstrating both programming techniques, but also art techniques. And these are actually available. I'll be launching them soon. And here I've got um, a, a George Nice Schotter artwork, um, Damien Borowick's computer drawing work, and um, Charles Kasuri's work that was in Cybernetic Serendipity. Versions of those created using um, Scratch programming. And you'll see the outcome of this set of exercises is a lot of interesting images, um, all in the style of, um, many of them in the style of classic computer artworks. <clears throat> and then the final activity, which was to make the interactive lamps, um, this has gone online and the focus now is 3D modelling of the lamps, but we've also been using scratch and video making to allow people to demonstrate the interactivity of the lamp. Oops, all right. um, so this one here is a short video and the video um, explains how the lamp works. And it's actually a scratch program and you can switch the lamp on and off and so on. So we managed to adapt our approach to teaching quite effectively to work online, even though we don't have the physicality um, that I like. We do actually have a lot of interesting activities and the students are um, finding those um, quite rewarding, I think. <clears throat> now, just finally, I'll mention some of the exhibitions. This is one thing that I haven't really been able to replicate online. You can have an online exhibition, but it's not the same um, as doing something um, face to face. So our East meets West exhibitions have taken place over a number of um, uh, sessions. We typically produce a catalogue and these are available and the exhibitions take place in a space called the Future Extension or sorry, the um, 729 Art Cafe and they can be quite big affairs, some of these exhibitions. Um, now, what I would say finally is coming out of those exhibitions and the activities has been an input actually to the national um, art student curriculum in China. And we now have a, a chapter in their core syllabus about digital art, computer art, and that features a number of artists um, we'll all be familiar with. Um, these artists are also in the Computer Arts Archive collection includes um, Ernest Edmonds, um, Boredom Research, um, Gibson Martelli and so on. So this work has led to the promotion of predominantly British computer art in China and this is something I would like to develop further and I'd like to see more exhibitions of British European computer art in China as well as the potential of bringing some of the student work 
and the, the artists that we were involved in from China over to Europe. Um, so that um, in, in conclusion really is the Future Extensions Art Lab and the work that we're doing in collaboration between the UK and China. Okay, e, Sean, thank you very much. I think it's really good to see how these collaborations can be facilitated even you know, with the restrictions that we're currently under and also the possibility